Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Please be seated. Make yourselves comfortable. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Vice President, grazie, benvenuti to all of you here, and buon pomeriggio to all of you. I am delighted to offer the best wishes of everybody here uh, to our distinguished guest, the Prime Minister of Italy, Matteo Renzi, and his wife, Agnese Landini, uh, and indeed to the entire uh, Italian delegation. We're very honored and very privileged to have you here today and excited to have you here today. I think you can tell from the reception with the President and his personal comments. Mr. Prime Minister, a number of decades ago when I was a high school student, uh, struggling, Understood. just Understood. a number, just a number. <laughs> you, know, you and I can relate to well, that. Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, I was, I was struggling to recall the pluperfect subjunctive of Latin verbs. And I was thinking very unkind thoughts about both Romulus and Remus at the time. And I never imagined that uh, a day like this would come where I would be introducing the Prime Minister of Italy. But here we are. And we hope that everybody feels very much at home, but particularly our honored guests. You will find uh, many dear friends here, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, friends of Italian history, of Italian culture, art, more than a few lovers of Italian wine. Uh, and provided you get a little moment to drive around Washington and see things, you'll see statues of Dante, Marconi, St. Christopher, St. Francis, glance at a dollar bill, and you will encounter a quotation from Virgil. Uh, look at a map. You'll recall that uh, this city is named for a son of Genoa, and this continent, as you mentioned this morning at the arrival ceremony, for a native of Florence. You visit almost any college uh, campus on a Friday night, and you'll see a toga party. It's a difficult derivative, I know, folks, but, but it's, it's, it's fun. It's an element of fun. And if you had turned on an American television set just two nights ago, you would have seen the United States Secretary of State portrayed by an extraordinarily dynamic individual, smart and good-looking, named Teo Leone. Not only that, our chef this afternoon is Tony Montuano, the culinary genius behind one of America's finest restaurant, uh, Spiaggia, in Chicago, and he is a distinguished member of the American Chef Corps, which is a volunteer group of chefs who do us proud at events, uh, not just here, but all around the world, and they travel overseas to help win hearts and minds and stomachs and friends for America. He is known throughout the country for his appearances on TV, on the TV show Top Chef Masters, and I ask that everybody here just join in saying thank you to him for donating his services to you. <laughs> so the last time I had the privilege of seeing Prime Minister Renzi was in New York, uh, actually just a few weeks ago. And I was privileged to present him with the prestigious Global Citizen Award on behalf of the Atlantic Council. And I know everybody here agrees that honor was richly deserved. The Prime Minister is the youngest person ever to be chosen as Italy's head of government. He's renowned for his high energy, dynamic ideas, his commitment to economic reform, to eloquence on behalf of the transatlantic partnership and leadership, and anybody who heard his comments this morning at the uh, arrival ceremony heard this presence, this vision, and uh, you could feel the energy and the commitment and the passion about it. And he has also shown a particularly graceful and difficult leadership in responding in humane ways <clears throat> to the global refugee crisis. <clears throat> of course, none of this should be surprising because, after all, he did go to graduate school in Massachusetts. <laughs> we are really delighted to welcome him here on an official state visit. This is the first state visit by an Italian Prime Minister in 20 years. And his visit could not come at a more propitious time because relations between the United States 
and Italy right now are what we would all call fantastico, or in Bostonese, wicked awesome. <laughs> our two nations, our two nations, our NATO allies, we work together extremely closely in Afghanistan and Iraq. We are partners in training international peacekeepers and security forces. We stand side by side in the fight against terrorist groups who are trying to destroy the very civilization that Roman lawmakers, philosophers, and artists did so much to create. And on climate change, we have both come down squarely on the side of Mother Nature. And for decades, we have engaged in joint projects related to the study and exploration of space, which, as we know, was invented by Galileo. The study, that is, not space itself. <laughs> Notwithstanding Italian claims there, too. <laughs> Uh, right now, Italy is hosting 30,000 members of America's armed forces and 30,000 U.S. students. Our total two-way trade has reached 80 billion annually. American tourists cross the Atlantic in droves in order to sample Italy's unique and astounding cultural heritage, to take part in events such as last year's extraordinary Milan Expo, and we're very glad to have the commissioner, Doug Hickey, here, who did such a good job of stewarding that. And we also know there are an awful lot of people who are playing the Italian version of Pokemon Go, Go these days. About 17 million Americans proudly claim Italian heritage. And a lot of them are with us here this afternoon. <laughs> I'm confident that with Prime Minister Renzi setting the policy in Rome, and, and the President could not have made this more clear in the bilateral meeting that we had today, where he really singled out in what is one of the more interesting conversations I think Vice President and I would say we have shared in, because it was serious and it was observant. It was thoughtful, it was sensitive and visionary, as I said. And I think uh, everybody here knows how uh, challenged Europe is right now and the relationship with Europe. I think the President could not have been more clear in singling out the Prime Minister of Italy, uh, Matteo Renzi, for the singular role that he is playing and will play in the future as we go forward. And I don't think uh, I would be letting the cat out of the bag and saying to you that the President was very clear about the sense of responsibility that he thought the Prime Minister has, because that is one of the most important relationships in the world. My friends, we all care about the bonds that exist between Italy and the United States, but I want to just share with you for a moment uh, a special and more personal reason for my sense uh, of that bond. My father passed away about 16 years ago. He had a very deep affection for Europe, and as a Foreign Service officer, he was consistently posted uh, through Europe. And it was during that time when I was a young kid over there that I actually uh, picked up enough Italian to get by, uh, which I have forgotten over the years. But at the age of 82, uh, my dad did something that was a little bit extreme even for him. He decided to polish up on the language that he loved the most, Italian, and he moved into a dorm at Dartmouth College, where he was the oldest student by several decades. <laughs> he took a course, he passed it, but that wasn't enough. He wanted to learn more. So a few months later, he went to Prime Minister Renzi's home city of Florence, where he arranged for an elderly woman, I say elderly relative to his 82, to, <laughs> to cook his meals and to speak Italian with him. And one evening, when the woman started talking about Medici this and Medici that, my father decided he had finally made it. He had begun to master the language. So he responded, thinking, how great it was to be exchanging ideas on the high points of Florentine history with a native Italian, in Italian. It was only then that he realized, to his absolute dismay, that the woman was actually complaining about her doctors. <laughs> and that it wasn't Medici that she was talking about, but Medicina. <laughs> so, uh, I, I just remind all of you that Roma non fu fatta in un giorno, folks. It, it takes a little while. Uh, 
I just try a little bit in, in retrospect here. Amici, la capitale dell'Italia è conosciuta come la città eterna. Vi chiedo allora di unirvi a me per un brindisi a quella che sono sicuro sarà un'eterna amicizia tra gli Stati Uniti e Italia e il leader, leader del gover governo italiano, il primo ministro Matteo Renzi. Ladies and gentlemen, Rome is known as the eternal city, as all of you know. I want you to join me now in a toast to what I am confident will be the eternal friendship between the United States of America, the Italian people, and to the leader of the government of Italy, Prime Minister Matteo Renzi. Well, ladies and gentlemen, John just read my speech. I can't speak Italian, but I know how to love an Italian. I married Dominic Giacoppa's daughter. I may be Irish, but I'm not slow, Matteo. And Yezi, uh, I, uh, I, I tell you what, um, well, I won't tell you, actually. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Prime Minister, I don't know whether you know this, but this lunch and this dinner are the hottest ticket in this town. This may be uh, the last uh, state lunch and state dinner that the President uh, has and we have, but uh, it's, uh, as the President said today, he saved the best for last. And, uh, and I, it's because uh, there's such an incredible love of Italy uh, uh, here in this country. As John said, uh, there are millions, 17 million Americans claiming Italian heritage, and a couple Irish Catholic guys who are claiming Irish heritage. I grew up in a little steel town after I moved from Scranton, Pennsylvania, which is an all Irish Catholic neighborhood. I moved to this little steel town in Delaware named Claymont, Delaware, which was predominantly an Italian. I went to Holy Rosary School. I was the only guy whose name didn't end in a vowel, and they made me self-conscious the rest of my, uh, my grade school career. And, um, but uh, what happened was that uh, I just want you to know I overcame it. I'm the only, I'm told, the only non-Italian in the hundred and I think four-year history of the Sons of Italy to be named Man of the Year. So show me some respect. Show me some respect. There were, there were several thousand people at one of the major facilities here in Washington when I got the award and my mother was there, Gene Finnegan Biden. And, uh, I called a friend of mine that I had room with and played ball with through high school and college football with, a guy named Tommy Lewis, but Tommy was Italian and his mother was a DeMeo, and he makes, and I called him before I was going to prepare my speech. I said, Tommy, what do you think I should say? And I said, remind me of some of the guys you grew up with. And he started off with Anzalotti, Ambrosino, went down the list. And uh, I realized that everybody who grew up with was Italian. So when I stood up to accept the award, I said, you know, and I named all the people who grew up with them, I said, you know, the more I thought about this, I deserve this damn award. <laughs> I deserve it. Look, um, you know, uh, um, the fact is that the passion and commitment and the pride of the Italian community are worn on my, uh, my, my wife's sleeve and on her, and her parents, uh, her grandparents. And it's the same passion and pride that's reflected in the 17 million uh, Italian Americans. Uh, we're probably the only one of the few countries in the world where hyphenated everything. But uh, it, is, um, it is a deep, deep uh, affection. I, uh, I got elected to the United States Senate. John and I were reminiscing uh, earlier. We've known each other since 1972 when we both ran for office. And, uh, uh, in my home state, and you've been to my home state, in my home state, uh, Mateo, there's a big Italian-American area called Little Italy, but it's, uh, it's um, St. Anthony of Padua Parish, and Italian immigrants built it. They were shipbuilders and masons and so on. And, uh, 
And uh, that, it always had voted Republican. And the reason it voted Republican, when they all came, like a lot of big cities, the city happened to be controlled by the Republican Party. So if you wanted a job, just like it was in Philadelphia, you'd be Irish, et cetera. And, uh, and uh, I just want you to know that uh, I got embraced by, uh, by the community. And uh, in my home state of Delaware, uh, um, I'm the first one to win, uh, win the community. I only won by 3,200 votes for the United States Senate as a 29-year-old kid. And I got over 87 percent of the vote in, uh, in the Italian community. And that's when they changed my name to Bidino. I finally <laughs> had made it. And when I lost my son recently, uh, it was the — we chose uh, the Italian-American community to, uh, to uh, have his, uh, his mass. And uh, um, thousands and thousands of people turned up. The reason I mention that is the one thing about the Italian-American community is my mother used to have an expression. And she'd look at you and she'd say — Secretary Powell's heard me say this before, and she meant it. She'd say, Joe, remember, look at me. You're defined by your courage, and you're redeemed by your loyalty. That is the best description of the Italian-American community I can think of. They're defined by their courage and redeemed by their loyalty. It's one of the most loyal and steadfast communities in the United States of America. And I am proud. Mateo, I had a whole four pages here about uh, all that we've worked together on, Italy and the United States and our friendship, et cetera. But I'd be remiss if I didn't, uh, if I didn't speak to our ambassador and his wife. Uh, uh, John, you've done an incredible job for us, but uh, my family's in, uh, incredibly indebted uh, to John because uh, for — excuse, as we used to say in the Senate, a point of personal privilege uh, — for 40 years, I took my entire family. It grew till we traveled as a pack, uh, uh, 14 of us. And for 42 years, we went to Nantucket every Thanksgiving. And uh, when we lost our son, no one had the courage to go back. And uh, John offered, uh, offered the, the residence, the, the ambassadorial residence in Italy. And I was able to bring my five grandchildren to see your magnificent country. I was able to — I've been many, many, many times. But uh, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. And to show you this man's hospitality, uh, we were supposed to meet. And it was over that weekend. And he said, all right, and I was prepared to go to his office. And he said, no, no, no. He came to the residence. He met me at the residence. The Prime Minister of Italy came to see me because he wanted to extend his, uh, his condolences, but also wanted to extend uh, um, his friendship. And today, I've been to every single head of state meeting the President's had in the Oval Office. And uh, I have — I don't recall the President ever speaking in such personal terms about a leader. The President pointed out that he and John and I and many of us are more concerned about Europe regaining its self-confidence than we are about the Middle East or any other part of the world. Because, quite frankly, the United States cannot conduct its foreign policy and have its interests met without a united, confident Europe. And that's when he turned to Matteo and he said, and he was — and, you know, the President is not uh, — doesn't waste a lot of words. He looked at him and he said, and we, the United States, we're looking to you. Europe is looking to you, not only to lead Italy, but to lead Europe, to lead Europe. This is a man with courage. This is a man with genuine vision. This is a man who understands that uh, — in politics, no matter where it is, uh, the brave do get rewarded. People do respect integrity. People do respect taking difficult decisions. And, Matteo, you've shown incredible tenacity in office. You've never shied away from any tough decision. You've never backed down when things got tough. 
and you've earned the nickname in Italy, uh, the Scrapper. Uh, and, uh, but, but, but you've led the way in important reforms, fighting the restructure of Italy's labor laws, uh, increasing protections for the Italian LGBT community, uh, establishing same-sex unions, uh, making 50 percent of your cabinet women. You've addressed the issues of the moment. And you addressed them with confidence, with absolute confidence. So I'm confident that our nations are going to continue to stand together to fight side by side in the issues that matter for the future of peace and prosperity and greater opportunity for all the children on this earth. And the way you, your wife, your country has embraced the tens of thousands of children fleeing chaos, fleeing from Africa, fleeing from Libya, and prior to the agreement with Turkey, fleeing through Turkey. It's, it's, it's been, matter of fact, the President and I and John talked today about your generosity may get you in trouble. And because uh, you have been, uh, you, you've been so steadfast. But uh, um, I'd like you all to, uh, if you would, raise your glass to the enduring let me get your guys get a glass. <laughs> the enduring friendship and partnership between our countries and to wish you and your country, but you, incredible good luck leading not only your country, but yours. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's all yours. Just make sure you don't read John's speech. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Secretary, Mr. Vice President, uh, dear Vice President, uh, I'm really, I'm really in difficult moment because uh, I receive a very good speech of the team about the great crisis around the world because this is the State Secretary, this is the Department, State Department. So I arrive with, and uh, with. Uh, Two guys incredible as Joe and John. It's impossible <laughs> to make a good speech, and because you are great speakers, you. But if it's correct, just, just don't talk about age. That's all we ask you. <laughs> if if is an Italian character, courage and loyalty. I think you are you both are great Italians because your courage, your loyalty, and your friendship in, uh, toward our people, it's an incredible gift for us. So first of all, thank you so much, and thank you so much for the invitation. For me, it's, uh, it's not easy because uh, uh, when I met President Obama in, um, in Izeshima uh, during the G7, I, I told him, please, Mr. President, why? don't organize a new visit in Italy. Uh, maybe you can visit the Pope. I try, obviously, to, to involve him. Uh, <laughs> you have the good Italian wine. The, 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 the. He told me, no. OK. <laughs> Why? Because uh, uh, I will organize uh, for uh, your country a state dinner, the last state dinner. So for me and for us, this is a great gift. This is a great uh, act of friendship and also this is a message because uh, our friendship is not only focused on the past. We have a lot of reasons for the great friendship in the past. The relation between uh, Colombo, between uh, Amerigo, I came uh, very briefly, eh? uh, I continue with the, I discuss also about uh, the, the, the flag, the American flag, we could be flag because in Italy there is a legend I think is a legend in Florence, in which the flag came from a particular John church in Florence with the strips red and white. But this is the point. The real reason of this friendship is not only focused on the past. Every day we have a lot of international commitments together. International commitments uh, in uh, Afghanistan, uh, in uh, Iraq, in uh, Africa, around the world, in Balkanian areas. And we consider the United States of America as our point uh, of reference, our clear leader, and we will continue to work together. But the real challenge today is not simply to 
create a common value to um, work together in the international uh, issues. It's fight together against the culture of aid, against the culture of intolerance, against the culture of uh, lack of respect. United States are a model in this fight. And I think we need a new effort in this particular moment because we risk not only out of uh, our borders a deviation, a deviation from our ideals and from our identity. For that reason, I think the presence of a great country as United States in our destiny is a gift, but also the relation with two great guys. I, I think I am only one Italian who visited Delaware as first state. I think, <laughs> I, I, I think, I think this is, a, and I, I don't know why, I don't remember why, but really, 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 no, no, please, it's, it's you. Not for you, Joe, this is the problem. But when I met an Italian community in Wilmington, 2006, they told me, ah, oh, we have a senator. We have, I know, Joe Biden, I know a little uh, American politics. Ah, oh, it's incredible. It's Italian, but it's not Italian. Perfect. <laughs> so, and, and a pizzaiolo, a man who organized, create a fantastic pizza. So, in 2006, I, I was the only one Italian who visited Delaware before the other countries, but uh, maybe it's the common destiny, Joe. With, uh, and uh, I, I start my experience in um, a very political experience, more correctly, in a very particular moment in 2004 when John uh, ran for the White House and uh, uh, we remember the, the great ideals and values of this, unfortunately, without victory but with a great message uh, for the new generations and also with a um, speech very powerful in, uh, the, during the um, uh, convention of the young uh, senator of uh, Illinois. Some guy. Uh, some guy, yes. Yeah, so you, you choose a very good... Uh, <laughs> so, thinking it, to be here with those guys in, uh, in the State Department, it's an incredible privilege. But I think this is not simply a sentiment of friendship. We have a common identity and common value. I am really great... My, my gratitude to you for the incredible passion and for incredible quality of your job. And I ensure to everyone, particularly Italian community, Italian American, Italian community, we will continue to give in our hearts this type of value. And let me conclude about one point. Yes, Italy is wonderful. There are Italian journalists. Yes, okay, I cannot speak about uh, the difference between Italian cities. Okay. But, uh, but uh, I think if your father, at 82 years, decide to study Italian and also to discuss with this uh, woman about the role of Medici's family, this is not simply a sentiment of a great man who need a future also if not so young. But I think it's a message, it's an incredible message and we, 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 we learn this message from uh, American people. It's the desire to continue to look at the future in every moment. Martin Luther King wrote a great statement, a lot of great, but particularly also if tomorrow is the last day I will continue to think about the tree, about the future. So I think, dear Joe, dear John, for Italy and the United States, the sentiment is the same. We cannot look at the past. The past is wonderful and magnificent, but we continue to go in direction of the future with the same expectation and the same aspiration of your father 82 years looking at the future. This is also the message I, I learned from your incredible job 
And I hope, with my government, with Paolo Gentiloni, particularly with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, we will continue. And all the speech about the great passion and the great initiatives of Italy around, with, in cooperation with the Secretary uh, of the, the, the State Department, I will leave for the next time. But, <laughs> but Paolo, but, but Paolo, please. But the best thing we could organize with the United States of America is not simply a great initiative and a great political initiative, is to share this value and this ideal. Thank you so much. Enjoy. And, uh, in Italian expression is salute. 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 So, folks, uh, just... Just before you, you eat, just before you eat, just one moment left. First of all, I love the way Matteo, the Prime Minister, gives birth to every thought and word. He's like, yeah, I, I, um, I want to introduce a few. There are loads of distinguished guests here, but I do want the President's Cabinet uh, to be particularly rep represented here, and particularly uh, our former uh, Secretary of State, Colin Powell. Delighted to have you here, Colin. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just quickly want to thank uh, uh, so many colleagues from the administration coming. Susan Rice, National Security Advisor. <laughs> Ernie Moniz, uh, the Secretary of Energy, and my great colleague. And Valerie Jarrett, the President's Special Advisor for Women, Business, Affairs. Uh, Sean Dunneman, our Secretary of Housing, is over here. Maria Contreras Sweet, our uh, cabinet member, secretary, uh, there she is, the head of the Small Business Administration. Thank you. And I believe I got every member of the cabinet. If not, I won't be in the cabinet anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, please enjoy lunch and orders. And I want, to rep I want to say a word, please. My colleague, Paolo Gentiloni, the Foreign Minister of Italy, is one of the best colleagues anybody could ask for. He does an incredible job, and he's a friend to boot, and I appreciate his being here. Thank you. Thank you.